All right, welcome back. This is the second part of the Dilfer A149-1 uh, quantized stored random voltages demo. Uh, the last time around, we were talking about the quantized random voltage section here at the top. Uh, we went over the different outputs, talked about the clock in, what that does for you as far as making the module go and making these gates move along over here. Um, we talked about the range knob. So this time around, we're going to go down into the stored random voltages. because There are some similarities, but uh, there's also a lot of differences down here at the bottom. So first, let's talk about similarities. So similarities, there's a clock in. So if I take the clock from the top and plug it into there, um, it does what you expect it to. Uh, in the previous demo, we talked about how every time a gate goes out from your LFO or sequencer, uh, whatever voltage source you're using to trigger the clock here, clock input, um, a random note gets sent out from the two outputs. Now, up in the top, the top one was in octaves, and this one was in semitones, but the bottom two are a little bit different. These outputs are going to be uh, actually one quarter uh, tone. So you're actually having to like half a semitone. So it's in quarter tone. So it's actually uh, works out to, I think, 1 48th of a volt, if you want the, uh, the number for it. Um, and so what that's going to mean for you when you're outputting here is, uh, for the most part, this is not going to be uh, primarily usable in a tonal type of environment, uh, at least not where you could like get it to sync up with a scale or anything like that uh, without any kind of external modules like a quantizer to then correct these to octave intervals or semitone intervals, however you wanted to do it. Um, but uh, the outputs here actually output up to 256 different outputs right there. Uh, they're similar, but uh, not exactly identical. The top one has a equal distribution. So it's equal distrib equally distributing the 256 possible states coming out of it. Um, the one below that actually has a controllable distribution. So by moving this dial, you can control how those voltages are actually distributed. And just like you would expect, on the low end, it's primarily going to um, send out lower pitched um, random voltages. However, that does not mean that it will not output any mid or high voltages. It still does, but they just happen much less frequently. So when you move to the middle, you have slightly less of a chance to get the lower uh, notes or pitches or less of a chance to get the higher pitches, uh, more likely to get middle, but you'll still get them occasionally. And then, of course, all the way going in the clockwise position, it's going to be the exact opposite of what we saw all the way over here in the counterclockwise position, which is it's going to be kind of concentrated on the high or the higher pitched realm of tones. However, you will still get intermittently um, middle tones or medium pitch tones and low pitch tones mixed in there. And we'll hear that a little bit uh, as we go along. You do have a couple of controls here. You have a CV input that controls the distribution, uh, which is actually down here. Uh, so if you set it for, let's say, you have it set to uh, the very bottom, clockwise position. So it's supposed to be concentrating on the lower spectrum of pitches. And you feed an LFO into here. 
uh, it's going to modulate this parameter here. So it might move it up, you know, towards the middle range so you get more medium pitches. And then as the modulation moves, it moves back down to its normal position. Um, but that all happens orally or, you know, where you can hear it. Um, and we'll see a demonstration of that later. This right here is going to be an attenuator, so that's going to control how much of the CV being input here um, is going to affect the manual distribution that you set down here. Um, an interesting thing to note, uh, which I had to dig a little bit in the manual, um, is this output, uh, for the most part, as far as I can tell in the manual, uh, is not actually affected by this style or this style or this input. So this kind of just is outputting the different states uh, with equal probability every single time. Um, and then at the bottom is the one that's actually controlled by this and also controlling the input here, the CV input, which then affects this. Um, if you actually do both, like let's say you're moving this and you also have a CB, CV uh, control voltage being fed into this input, like let's say you're doing both, then what's going to come out of here is going to be a sum of whatever the setting is here added to the CV input here, uh, if that made sense. Now, this rule is going to apply as well. We'll see a little bit later when we demo the quantized random voltages section modulation um, in that if you move this dial and you have an input here, then whatever setting it's at and you have an input here, then it's going to be summed and that's going to control the value of n. So there you go. And that's a pretty common convention with uh, DOFR modules. This is VCOs, filters. So if you have more than one CV input, it tends to sum them together. So that's the stored random voltages section. So now let's actually hear what this sounds like. So we have a clock going over here. And I'm going to increase the frequency just a little bit. And we're going to hear, you know, these 256 possible states. So I'm going to take my random notes here. And I'm going to use the equal distribution here. Patch it into my VCO. And then I'm going to take it out from my VCO and go into my filter. So we should hear sound here shortly as soon as I patch this. There we go. Oh, and I forgot one important patch. So let me get that. Uh, I forgot my gate. So I'm going to patch that. And I'm going to go right there. There we go. So that's equal distribution of random outputs from those 256 possibilities coming out of here. Um, and as we were talking about earlier, these do not affect the output here. So if I move this all the way to the bottom, it is affecting the distribution at the bottom, but it's not going to affect the output here. It's still equally distributed. And I can move this. Of course, I don't have an input here, but I can move this and nothing is being changed there. And if I go really fast. So if you have a very acute ear, you may actually hear, um, you know, a semitone note, like you'll hear a C or you'll hear a G or hear an F, but every once in a while you'll hear a note that's kind of in the cracks, so to speak. Uh, like you'll hear maybe a G flat and you'll say, hey, that sounds a little bit flat on a G flat. Uh, well, that's the notes that are kind of in between there, the tones. Okay, so I think we got the idea behind that. So let me bring the frequency down a little bit. And I'm going to unpatch from the equal probability distribution right there. And let's go right into the manual distribution. And right now I actually have it set to the lowest value. So what it should start out with is fairly low values with some kind of medium and high pitched values 
kind of intermittently thrown in there. So here we go. And so now I'm going to adjust my distribution, and I'm going to move it up to about the midpoint right there. So now if I go all the way to the top, we should hear primarily high-pitched tones and maybe occasionally thrown in a low-pitched tone. They're almost so high I can't even hear it. And they're a little bit lower than it was before. And then, of course, back down to somewhere in the mid-range. And you can audibly hear it now changing as we move it there. So that is our manual control of distribution of our random voltages coming out of there. Okay, so there you have it. We talked about the quantized random voltages section over here. Get a little demonstration of the different outputs here. And then we got a demonstration of the equal probability distribution output here in the bottom stored random voltages section uh, just right now. And then uh, we actually did the output here where we can actually control the distribution of the random voltages. So we can kind of focus it into either high pitched primarily with kind of interspersed medium and low range pitches, or we can say low range pitches with intermittent high and medium pitches in there. So we can control it to a certain extent. Very small extent, though, when I add that. Um, now, the one thing you may have noticed here, and I hadn't brought it up, but um, when I have the clock fed into here, you notice there's no movement on the gates. Well, that's because this breakout module, as we said before, is actually tied to the top section right here. So unless there's a clock signal going there, then you're not going to actually get any movement from these gates. So, there you go. Little demonstration. Let's do it a little bit faster, too. Um, now, for the next one, I'm just going to unpatch the audio here. Uh, for the next one, we're going to actually look at modulating the inputs of the distribution and the inputs for control voltage controlling the value of N. And we're going to see how that works and hear what that sounds like, and, uh, and we'll take it from there. So stay tuned for that, and we should be around shortly. Thanks for watching.